Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a special guest, Nate Spears. We are going to do a q and I asked you guys on my stories to ask us anything and we are going to answer them for you in this video. You ready to get started? How old are you both? Well, contrary to what everyone might think because of what she said, I'm actually not 45. I'm 28. 29. You're 29. I am 31. She's a cradle robber. What did Nate do before he met you? I was in the Marine Corps. I was in the infantry. Um, what does infantry mean? Because I had no, I like didn't know anything. A, a rifleman, if you will. Um, I deployed to Afghanistan. How many um, times? So I deployed two times. Whenever I got out of the Marine Corps, um, I'm from Illinois, but I did not want to go back to Illinois, so I just got into my car and I drove to Los Angeles. I wanted to do something in, in fitness and I knew there was a lot of fit people in Los Angeles. So I came here, I was homeless for a little bit until I could you know, figure out what was going on. He slept on Venice Beach. Slept on Venice Beach. And I mean, to be fair, it wasn't that bad coming from the Marine Corps whenever you're mm. sleeping in the field all the time. Like sleeping out on the beach is, Especially, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. Hmm. Um, I'd been introduced to CrossFit whenever I was in the Marine Corps. I liked it a lot. Whenever I got out, CrossFit was kind of like, I don't know, it kept me busy, kept my mind busy, kept, it gave me something to work for. For some stupid reason, I decided I wanted to compete in CrossFit and I wanted to go as far as I could in CrossFit. I wanted to compete professionally and so that's what I did. I worked out a lot, a lot, a lot, and I competed and I made money by, you know, winning competitions or I didn't make money by losing competitions. Um, so I did that for a very long time. He made it to regionals, which is like a goal that you had and the first time you tried, you didn't make it. And then you tried again and you ended up making it. Right. Um, and that was 2018. I tied. I tied for the last qualifying position to go to regionals Ugh. and did not make it, which meant I had to do a whole nother year of training to, to qualify again. I had this big, big vision of what qualifying for regionals was, was going to have in store for me and had nothing in store for me, really. Um, nothing at all. So. We, we don't we don't do CrossFit anymore. He's a retired CrossFitter. Retired. I just I do a lot of Barry's boot camp now. And he, I, I lift heavier than him now, so she's that's cool. Routinely lifts <laughs> more weights than I do, so. Fit. And then you were also rescuing a bunch of dogs. Oh right. So after I crashed and burned at regionals pretty bad. He I, got lab lamb labdo. Rabdo. Rabdo. I got, got rabdo to read about it. Um, anyways. After regionals, I did an entire year rescuing dogs and boarding and training dogs out of my loft. I filled the entire space with about six to seven kennels, and at any given time, I would have anywhere from six to nine dogs, all big dogs, always German Shepherds, Belgian Malinois. The ones that they were going to put down because they were vicious. I, I, I specialized in rescuing youth listed dogs, uh, aggressive bite history dogs, dogs that kind of had been just given up on altogether. And I, I would take them in and, and train them, build a bond with them and build a good structure and foundation for them so that I could put them into a home. Um, give them a life. Yeah, give them, give them a life. And then that's, that's when I met Ramey. I had a partner that I was working with and that partner was working with Ramey and he, he sent her my way to take care of Simba. How did you guys meet? So I was going to New York and I needed a place to board Simba. Actually right around this time last year. It Very was. close. It was. My dog trainer was like, okay, I have someone in LA. You can drop him off and he'll take care of you. Um, so I was imagining that I'd meet up with, I don't know, just no one interesting and just gonna drop him off and bye, but like, I pulled up and he walked over to the car, grabbed him, but didn't say a word to me, turned around and started walking off with my dog. And I was just like, excuse me, like, who are you? But I had Simba for 
like five, four or five days. I think it was like three days. It wasn't that long. I wish I had Simba longer. Oh, but oh yeah, the another thing was that like while he was boarding Simba, he sends me a video. Seriously though, like who does this? He's roller skating Simba, and he's like showing Simba and like you're skating, but it's like but like half the screen is his abs. <laughs> I'm just That's like. Not true. Okay, like what are you trying to show That's me not, here? Clearly can, you're flirting. She can pull the video up right now. The, the, Let's do it. The, you guys be the judge of it. Leave me a comment below to see if you no, thought he was she, flirting with me. But it was okay. more absent than Anyways. So. Anyways, he also sent me really cute pictures of Simba and Juno together. They got along they got and along really well. It's just kind of really flirty. Um he doesn't think so, but no. he he took the time to edit the photos that he sent me. And I was just like, okay, he's putting in effort. Like he, like, he's into, he's into me. <laughs> then, so then she comes to pick up Simba. She acts really excited to see me for I don't know what reason. But <laughs> a couple days goes by and she slides into my DMs with a video of her roller skating. Or I, texted me. I texted you. What, e even worse. She texts she texts no. me a video of her skating Simba and you know just like hey you've inspired me to get skates and now I'm skating Simba and then he proceeds to say well you know if you and Simba need a hiking buddy Juno and I are always down Simba and Juno had a really good relationship and <laughs> I really bonded with Simba a lot and I thought that I would just be, you know, hanging out with Simba and kind of working with him. I just him have a, a hard bit. time believing that you didn't like have any interest in me, like, and it was just about Simba and Juno I don't getting think together. It, I don't think it had Come to do on, with. Come on, guys. I don't think it had to do with me having interest in you. Mm -hmm. It had really more to do with. I didn't think there was a chance in all of hell that you would be interested in me. I see. But were you making efforts? I was making efforts because I wanted to hang out with Simba's. Yeah. And what's funny is that on his phone, I was saved as Simba's mom. Yeah. For a I, long time. I had her saved as Simba's mom. <laughs> Do you think Nate is cuter with a full beard or the shorter shave? <laughs> um, I, why are you looking at me? I think he's handsome either way, honestly. Um, I was getting used to his beard. And then now that it's shorter, I like this too, so I could go either way, honestly. But I cannot do like long sitting on your chest type of beard. Like I don't want to feel the hair. How's the sexual chemistry? Hard not to judge a book by its cover, but I feel like it's dot, 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 great. I mean, which book are we judging by its cover, you or me? Us. Us, okay. Well. Well, we, we have these things where we're like texting each other and it's like, we're like sex, sex sexting and then talking about something serious. Oh, yeah. Sexting, talking about something serious. Yeah, she'll be, she'll be sitting at a nice dinner and yeah. like she'll send a picture of a dish and then the next, the follow on, you know, text will be, you know, picking up with our, our smut talk. Yeah. And like I just remember like being in a party store in Japan and oh, just yeah. literally hiding in a corner. That's, that's you know. nice. Yeah, that's nice. We were just eating with those bowls for dinner <laughs> that she bought. Yeah, we've always had really good sexual chemistry from the start. Yeah. Yeah. Does Nate live with you permanently? <laughs> yes. Yep, we sleep together every night. Yep, and it's the best. Is it hard for Nate to get along with parents due to language barriers? Surprisingly, I don't have a very good track record with parents, um, as, as to be expected, really. Her mom has this really great way of kind of looking past the exterior. Um, and I, I was nervous about that because yeah. I remember like his- I like, love her parents, they're awesome. His tattoos and things like that, like, oh, what is my, what is my conservative mom gonna think of him? You know, like, he looks like a bad boy, but, yeah. They liked you from the start. Like everything was always very comfortable from the start. Also, I'm learning Japanese. Oh yeah. Every I, day I learn one new Japanese word. One new word. word, depending on what's going on that day, whatever we're inspired by, I write down the Japanese word and then the English on the other side of the note card. What are some words that you've learned? Kakoi. Which means cool. Cool guy. Cool guy. Oishi is tasty. Tasty. 
Were you guys broken up earlier this year? Everything was effortless from the beginning. Everything went so well, so fast, all from the get-go. And if everything is so good and climbs that fast, really, once you get to that peak so quickly, really the only the only way you have to go is down. And that's kind of what happened to us. We, we reached that peak very quickly and we, we got kind of comfortable and a good, we see it now more than ever, like a good, healthy, thriving relationship. It, it requires a lot. It requires a lot of work. It requires us, you know, checking in with one another. Every day. Every, every, every day, day at least. And just kind of like, hey, how are you feeling? Like, is there you know, things I can do better? Um, yeah, and as soon as like there is tension, it's like, what's going on there? Like, can we talk about it? Yeah, so. so. What, whenever we weren't ditching out that effort before, you know, it, everything just kind of snowballed out of control. There's a huge epic meltdown. And like she said, I think that that time apart really, it, it showed us how important one another are mm -hmm. to each other, I guess. Yeah. And, how many serious relationships has, have you been in? And I'm the third, right? How was that time apart for Nate? Did he discover new things about himself without you? Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was rough. I learned things the hard way. I need to, I need to really experience things like that to, to learn and grow. Um, so it gave me a lot of time to kind of get inside myself and figure out what was going on. Whenever her and I met, I wasn't doing so, so great. I had gotten out of the Marine Corps and, and I never really addressed a lot of things from the Marine Corps. Just I just kind of got out and started living my life as if nothing had really happened and I compartmentalized all of these things in my head and I just couldn't figure out why anytime something got hard, I didn't have the, the substance to, to stay strong and handle it. I would kind of just bottle things up and, and run away from everything and she, she challenged me on every level. She was like my only light she was like the only thing that kind of kept me going and that's that's not healthy it's it's not a it's not a healthy way to have a relationship so she made me kind of search and and become a whole individual so that i could i could be whole for her i mean you also like became more were open to being more vulnerable which was something that vulnerability was you... a, it was a huge thing to me i've i've never really had I've never really had the option to have, you know, somebody to lean on or somebody to depend on or it, it, everything in my life has always been like, I got to figure it out or nothing's ever going to happen. Um, so becoming vulnerable with her was a huge, huge hurdle for me to clear. I think we- But that's really like broken down the barrier and like gotten us closer after that break. So, and that showed me how much he wanted this to work, you know, like that showed me how much I meant to him. In the past, I would have <clears> just, <throat> I would have just bottled everything up and just ran away and never came back and just, mm -hmm. you know, moved on, figured things out. But I didn't, yeah. didn't do that. I, I really thought that that was what you were going to do too. Like yeah. I, I wasn't sure. Um, I gave her her space. I gave her her time. We 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 spent our time, you know, figuring things out, and yeah. then we. We circled back around and I mean, you can, you can talk and talk all you want, but I think that we both proved things by, by our actions, by right. actually doing things. Yeah. How do you communicate when there's something bothering you? It used to be a lot worse than it is now. Um, we used to let things just kind of sit and fester and build up and snowball into something ginormous and then have a huge epic meltdown on one another. And now, um, in 
instead of letting it sit and build up, we kind of address it right right then and there. Yeah. We stop everything we're doing and we, we hatch everything out together and move on, move past it, move forward. We saw a couple of therapists recently and I think she helped us a lot in terms of like how to like approach each other because a lot of times I would say something and then you might get defensive over it or feel like I'm attacking you. But she taught us like always create a sandwich. So if you have something like negative you want to bring up, always say something positive first, then bring the, up the negative thing and then always end on a positive note. And I feel like ever since we started doing that and like practicing that, we've had so much better communication. Nice system. We want to hit, 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 hit the nail in the head. As soon as it comes up. Yeah. That's just been, it's been a game changer, honestly. How often do you guys eat out and do you have whatever you want? We actually, we actually eat out more than you might think, but we have our, like, we have our hot spots. Yes, so, let's talk about like, our hot spots. Like in Los Angeles, we have Air One, we have the hot food bar, salad bar. I eat the same, the same thing every single time. Um, I'm a creature of habit. Um, she eats, you know, very similar, same thing. During the day, we eat out more, and then at night, we make dinner, but maybe we'll go out once or twice a week. Does Nate like or dislike you showing him your relationship on social media? I lived a very private life before. I kept everything very, very private. I don't even know for what reason. I just did. Um, I kept to myself. Cause you're you're like mysterious. I am. I am a big part of her life. Actually, I'm gonna be a part of what she's sharing and what. Yeah, that's normal. That's that's what this relationship is. And you're okay with that? Yeah. She's conscious of it. Like I'm she's conscious. she. She's not rude about anything. Yeah, and like I tried to show you guys parts of him being silly and stuff, but he'll stop immediately as soon as I turn on my Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys don't get to see it, unfortunately. Okay, do you face any challenges as an interracial couple? Good question. Uh, I mean, to be quite honest, I, I don't know if this is, is this a bad thing to say? I've never really, I guess, found Asians <laughs> that attractive, I guess, until I met her. Um, like, he's a he's a country boy from Illinois. Yes. But fuck Illinois. Yep. Like, I went there. There's not a whole lot of diversity where I'm from, but... Right. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't think we face any challenges. Yeah. I don't think so. I like to show him, like my culture i think it makes it interesting i mean i'm the more and more i get to know her and her mom the more and more fascinated i am with japanese culture just all around it's i'm i'm very fascinated by i i've read several books about yeah you know, he knows more than me. and the, kanmari like i love what is the, that wabi sabi you wabi -sabi. bought a book on wabi sabi i love just i love the minimalist mindset it's just it's clean they're very very disciplined efficient. very self-aware efficient it's I'm, I'm fascinated by it favorite gift you received from each other i think my favorite gift was that day that you came over with tupperware and also drew me a drawing of monkey holding knives like if i ever got a tattoo it would be that monkey with the knives yes I think that was so thoughtful. You do a lot of thoughtful things for me like that. Hmm. Did you like the Amazon gifts that I gave you? The like workout shirts? He hated them. No, she bought me. <laughs> he was like, I want sweat wicking clothes. So I go on Amazon and I'm like, okay, here are some wife beaters that are sweat wicking. Right. Boom, boom, different colors, different sizes. When 15 I, shirts total. Yeah. What gets me these like, string tank <laughs> these like bodybuilder string tank freaking tank tops yeah. down the back it <laughs> basically just exposes your entire body not mind you when he goes to the gym not something i'm about when he goes to the gym and he's walking around do you want to film me walking the way you walk yeah walk that way <laughs>
Why does Nay always look pissed off? I mean, I'm sorry I can't change the <laughs> genetic makeup of my face. I guess I've just got resting bitch face. <laughs> I mean, she sees me smile. A yeah. Lot. I... She, she makes me smile. Um, yeah, I get to see it. Obviously, I wouldn't be with someone that's pissed off all the time. Come on, guys. I'm like the opposite of that, so. What does Nate do for a living? I still train dogs. You train Still, people. I, I train people, all things fitness. Um, ran a boxing program at Google headquarters for the the Google tech employees, working executive protection, yep. um, personal protection, um, which is why I'm clean shaven now. How do you guys split finances of food, house mortgage, etc.? Spoiler alert, <laughs> I do not make more money than her.